My name is Mitchell Hora. I'm a seventh generation farmer and agronomist on a mission to help farmers grow soil health and improve their stewardship of natural resources. Farmers learn best from experience and learning from other farmers. We need to hear about what is working and see it on our neighbor's fields before we take the plunge on our own farms. In the Saginaw Valley area of Michigan, groups of farmers are banding together in peer groups to learn and experiment to improve the health of not only their soils, but ultimately of the Saginaw Bay. Mother Nature's always gonna win, right? I mean, that's uh, she has the final say in everything in agriculture. It's important, it, we're, we're doing things, you know, not trying to outguess it, but you know, we're mitigating risk. We're trying to hone in on, you know, what the soil biology itself is doing for us. My name's Justin Crick. I'm a sixth generation farmer here in Frankmuth on John Schluckbeer Farms. Uh, it's a, been a family farm for a long time. And then uh, my full-time job, I'm a certified crop advisor for Star of the West Milling Company out of the Richville location. We grow quite a few different things. Uh, sugar beets, uh, it's a big crop for us. Uh, soft white winter wheat, um, a lot of it's grown for seed. Dry edible beans, navy or blacks, you know, soybeans, corn, uh, typical things like that too. We do a fair amount of tissue sampling, um, especially being in a, a big beet growing area um, around here. We're pulling leaf samples, you know, every couple weeks. Um, and it's also very important to make sure that your nitrogen is balanced within uh, a sugar beet just to make sure that the quality of you know the sugar is going to be good come time to harvest. As much as we know about soil, we hardly know anything about soil, right? So I mean, I think that I mean that's going to be an open-ended thing probably for my lifetime and um, you know those after me. But uh, we need you know keep expanding. The precision world is just moving so so fast. You know what does that look like for farmers in this area that are utilizing precision ag and, and utilizing data-driven insights? You know we're trying to gain efficiency on everything. We're increasing yield because we're we're applying fertilizer to areas of the farm that are going to utilize it, and instead of you know putting a flat rate of fertilizer out there on an area of a farm that's not ever going to produce that type of crop, we're going to put it where it will. Yeah. And so guys are seeing yields go up, costs go down, and it's beneficial all around. What does that look like to be able to now take this data that I just spent money to gather, how do you create action off of that? So kind of like we're sitting here right now, we'll take this result from these tissue samples, we'll discuss the options, I'll say, hey, you're low in this, you're okay in this, you gotta evaluate the timing of when you're gonna harvest the crop, we'll discuss the options, and then, you know, just formulate a plan. So part of that, it's keeping, even in the tissue, it's keeping balance, it's not necessarily pushing a higher, higher, higher content, but it does pull back to balance again. So we'll just make those management decisions based upon the results, and then it's ultimately up to the grower what he decides to do. We try not to do, uh, you know, just throw the kitchen sink at it every past thing. So I mean, it, obviously it is, there's a lot of scouting involved. You want to address whatever is necessary at the time, but we, we don't want to be making unnecessary applications either. We don't want to be throwing everything at it. What's some of your message to some of the farmers who haven't quite made the jump yet to do some of these you know, conservation practices or, or utilize more precision ag. First thing I'm always gonna tell you is get your field soil sampled, that's number one. And um, get, that, get that soil balanced out and you, know, you don't have to do it all in one year and you can make way better management decisions based upon that. And then we get that in line and then we need to start dabbling in, whether it's cover crops, conservation, I mean, take your pick um, and there's such a wide array of things that all fall under that conservation category. How do I justify the additional cost of a new expense item for the farm? I put it like this, if you, if you pay for the soil sampling and you know, let's just say you have a farm where your pH is, is not balanced well or you have you know, your, your calcium is off, you will make that soil sampling cost back just by the variable rate line application. That's number one. Even it might be something just pulling a composite sample, which is you know, a lot cheaper and just starting there and showing is like, well, this is what it says. I think, you know, that's a problem. And then you just kind of build upon that. So, I mean, same thing, you can start small, but you need to be doing something. Farmers continue to learn from each other and farmers in the Saginaw Valley are helping one another to improve their soil health and improve the Bay's health. From farmer to farmer, it's the Bay way.